if our leaders are, are, are honest and truthful and they are ready to work, Nigeria will be among the best country in the world because we have what it takes. Our leaders are our problem. The only pro we are not having any problem in Nigeria. The only problem we are having are the leaders. Even me as somebody, I'm saying it publicly that if they can just do mass barrier for all our leaders <laughs> and let we the youth start ruling, you will see that everything will go the way it should go. If Nigeria and my papa I mean at the beginning for Nigeria, hmm, I go disown them. Yeah, I believe many of you will agree with that young boy on his position regarding the Nigerian political class. Um, some time ago, I published this video and um, some of you indicated interest and acts of the boy that dropped that commentary. I honestly don't have his um, contact, but as Grace may have it, he contacted me. After reading some comments from the from that video, where people are asking to get in contact with him, that they would like to help him, and um, he called me and told me that he is the boy that made that commentary. After reading um, comments from that video, so over to you, Williams. Good afternoon, man. Sir. My name is Anne Williams. So, what does you know as as must be for our leaders? My phone number is zero eight one. 76 seven i'm sorry my phone number is 081 76 03 4216 and god bless you all as you help me i need the support of all nigeria you can see my eyeball i'm dying of malaria and typhoid and i need the support of all nigerians and god bless you all as you all come to my aid god bless you all and god bless nigeria amen and be afraid is real watch out Okay, that is it. You've got his contact. You can reach out to him and help him. You can see this boy needs help. In fact, almost every young person out there needs help in Nigeria. Yeah, because people are really suffering. Okay, now let us go and um, touch light on these people. You know, recently the chief liar of Nigeria i mean the minister of information i mean Laya mohammed lai mohammed whatever they call him he had been at the front burner and other politicians like him trying to gag social media the last answers war was fought on social media they mobilized and submitted news using their phones yeah, mr chairman sir the world today revolves around two things, smartphone and data. Smartphone, and the young ones we are talking, don't even watch television, don't listen to radio, you don't read newspapers. And you'll be shocked that if you start arguing with your own daughter or your own son, she will be quoting as a Bible to social media. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, the long and short, sir, is that I've said is that we need a policy on national, a very national policy on social media, we need also to empower the various ministries, the Ministry of Information, on how to deal with social media. And we need technology to be able to shut down that will. Social media will become a menace to the country's uh, security. And I've asked them if social media is their problem. They left the problem of Nigerians, which they are the real and the root cause. And they are trying to gag social media that have helped to enhance lives of many young Nigerians have brought about, um, I mean, employment, um, adding value and creating jobs for young people in Nigeria. Now you want to gag it. Okay. Now, there is this interview that he granted uh, DW um, media platform and I bet you, after watching it, you will understand that these guys know nothing. 
they don't know anything happening around you they don't know that you are suffering they don't know that you are, you don't have jobs they don't know that the the police that they they unleash on the people are killing the people in fact they visually know nothing watch him i'll be right back Lai mohammed welcome to conflict zone thank you sir the human rights record of your administration has been widely condemned by the UN, Western countries, your own lawyers, international human rights bodies, for brutality and a stunning lack of accountability. Why does this go on in Nigeria? Why don't you get a grip on this? I, I think there's been a lot of um, misrepresentation. By all these groups? Absolutely. Really? Working in concert? Well, I wouldn't know whether they're working constant or they're working, you know, alone. But I know for a fact that this administration in particular has been very sensitive to the issue of human rights. Most sometimes terrorists, politicians, activists are confused with human rights. So you put it all down to confusion? I would do that because I do not know as a fact, and I've been a minister for almost five years, that there's any policy of my administration that's deliberately targeted at infringing on anybody's rights. Minister, last September, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, Agnes Kalamar. She launched a damning report on Nigeria, I'm sorry, and the human rights abuses of your security forces. She said, she spoke of countrywide patterns of abuses, include the police and military's excessive use of lethal, lethal force in violation of applicable international standards. I'm sure you read the report. I She's not a person who makes these accusations lightly. I, I, I did, but I would have been much more impressed if examples are, are given. Now, you must not forget that Nigeria has been locked in a war of attrition with the Boko Haram for almost a decade. And the kind of... Uh, uh, war we are fighting is a war amongst people. And even then, the military has been very careful to ensure that as much as possible, rights are not violated. Now, I've also read about reports of people who claim that their rights have been violated simply because they have been arrested by any of the security agencies and they've been asked to go through what I call due process. But I know that as a policy, this government does not violate anybody's right. If it's not a matter of policy, why have there been so few investigations? The UN investigators spoke about the absence of meaning, effective investigations, the absence of meaningful prosecution, all of which are compounded, she said, by the lack of transparency over the vast majority of security issues. That accusation about lack of transparency and effective communication strategy goes straight to your door, Minister, doesn't it? You are the Minister of Information. Serious criticism here. Well, I, I, what I, I know as a fact that um, several cases of abuse of you know, rights, especially against soldiers, have not only been investigated, but people have been punished and they've been made public. How many? How many people have been I, can, I don't know off head, but I... You're the Minister of Information. Well, I can, well, of course, I can't know everything, but I know, for, I know that uh, the military also is very jealous of its reputation and they have set up many, you know, uh, uh, um, panels and affected officers have either been dismissed or imprisoned. The International Criminal Court isn't, uh, isn't impressed by your record. It says in 2018 there was a reasonable basis to believe that the Nigerian security forces committed the war crimes of murder, torture, cruel treatment, outrages upon personal dignity and intentionally 
directing attacks against the civilian population, but you have failed to cooperate with their investigators and failed to provide information that they requested. And if you take these things seriously, and you cannot but take the word of the International Criminal Court seriously, you would have provided that information. Why didn't you? I wouldn't know what information they were asking for that was not provided. But I know that we've been cooperating with every agency, especially when it comes to... But the they say they weren't. They weren't getting help from you. They weren't getting the information. I know that um, the ICC met with the authorities in Nigeria, and we would have no choice then but to cooperate. They've been waiting for years to get your cooperation, and it hasn't come, Minister. Maybe you're out of the loop here. Uh, what? Maybe you don't have information about what's going on in your own government. I'm very informed about what goes on in my government, and I'll say, actually, I do take the trouble to ask. And I'm not, like I say again, I'm not aware that we have withdrawn our cooperation from the ICC. The UN Special Rapporteur speaks of countless allegations of excessive use of force by your police, in particular officers of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS. You said you wanted specific examples. These are specific examples. They've been accused of widespread torture, in some cases leading to deaths in custody and extrajudicial killings. So the unit is clearly out of control, isn't it? Because the UN Human Rights Committee warned your government to ensure that this group operates in accordance with international standards because they don't trust that it's doing that at the moment. Why would that be? I guess that I think I'm aware of that. And at a point in time when the report came out, the SARS was disbanded and only to be reconstituted and, you know, warned that henceforth they must ensure that they operate within the confines of the law. Your own National Human Rights Commission investigated their activities. It even held public hearings, but the results were never published. Why? I'm not aware that um, the results, I'm not aware that, uh, the results were, were not published. I'm not aware. But the assumption has to be that you're covering up damaging evidence, doesn't it, which you're afraid I, to make I, public? I don't think so. we are covering up any damaging evidence. Um, some policemen were dismissed. The entire SAS was disbanded and reorganized thereafter. Minister, on the question of providing information to outside investigators, you failed to provide information to the UN under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which Nigeria has signed. Last August, the treaty body accused you of failing to honour your reporting obligations under Article 40 of the Covenant and ignoring numerous reminders to do so. Why is that when you tell me you're cooperating so openly with these bodies? Why would they say that well, if it I, wasn't true? I, I wouldn't know why they would say that, but I know that we have never shown any international organization. We are very open. As the much facts as, don't as, support as much your as version, possible, for, As much as possible for any country who is, uh, you know, waging an internal, you know, who's fighting an internal, you know, uh, insurgency. We're very open and uh, we... We, we, we operate with the international, you know, regulations and laws. Well, clearly you don't, according to the bodies that uh, monitor these situations. Well, it depends, for, it, it depends on from which perspective they get the information. Well, they're getting it from different perspectives, aren't they? We're talking about human rights organizations, international human rights organizations. We're talking about the UN. We're talking about... Um, all kinds of bodies, the International Criminal Court, they're all saying the same thing, that you're not cooperating. And you sit here in front, in front of me, Minister, and say that that's simply not true. It's like saying it's darkness outside when we can see it's daylight. No, no, I think that analogy is not correct. I know that daily we receive, we entertain, and we engage all these bodies as a government. And you're not going to move from that version, despite the evidence that I have quoted well, I have, to you. I'm yet to see any, any evidence that um, 
uh, uh, that it's all there in black and white in the official reports. That I've not responded to. It's when you talked about SARS, yes, I admitted that yes, we received the report and we took action. Now, if this person na my papa, if these people na my papa, if Nigeria na my papa, I mean at the beginning for Nigeria, hmm, I go disown them. How can you have a father when no no say you the hungry? How can you have a father when no no say everything is working against you? How can you have a father and you are faced with serious security threats? They don't know. You don't have job. They don't know. You no shop. They don't know. You no get job. They don't know. How can you call that person a father? How can you say Nigeria, my fatherland? Who is fathering who? No, if you are not angry with these people, I am. And if you are not disappointed, I am. If you are not ashamed of these people, in fact, these people will not get shame. Now we, they shame their shame. And, you see, they feel intimidated anytime they are interacting with this Oibo media platform. They feel intimidated. And this answers, now you go drag their feet, eh? come outside we are not relenting you see our demand answers that is the irreducible minimum we will ever take or consider that is it drop your comment let me have your opinion on this this is bvi channel one where we tell you the truth the way we we see it we see it we say it all right so if you're new on this platform welcome on board like share let's have your opinion drop your comments all right? Follow us on all our social media platforms, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and click on the subscription for this on this channel, all right? Make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell. And again, I uh, encourage you to subscribe to my personal YouTube channel, be, uh, as well as a blog. That is where you can interact with me personally on a personal note, where I do things outside this agitation so you get to know who is this man, as was Gino Peters, and what he does outside activism. It will be all about lifestyle, relationship, uh, workout. In fact, everything. We can just talk on one-on-one -on -one basis. So, search out or look out for Asuzu blog on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media, including YouTube. All right? I'm signing out. Stay safe.